All right, so I can go in and push and push and push as, as much as I want to with, um, you know, the darkness. For those, I want to push back. Or sometimes I do it because I want to bring something forward. And of course, you can always go in and very gently scrub around a little bit on the ones that are light that you want to bring forward. And then most of the time you'll be able to lift out a little bit. Mm. You know, if you got everything a little too dark. But that's the system on those. And I'm going to show you one more thing on the pomegranates. And that is this one. I want to push it back and br to bring out this, you know, that's the light side because that's where the light hits it. Mm -hmm. So this side is away from the light. So it's darker, it's bluer, and it's also behind. So I really need to push it. Okay. And I'm going to push it by putting um, some straight permanent magenta on. You, you could wet it. Stupid. I'm going in on dry. Oh, wow. Okay. But you could wet it a little bit first if that would make you feel a little bit more secure. Because if you do this, you got to be fast. Don't dilly dally around. Because I don't want a line like this. And so I go in with a clean brush from the dry oh. side and I just drag that color out until it kind of disappears. Wow. I don't want a line. Can you see how that yeah. really... Oh, that's great. That yeah. darkened it a lot. And I can go in and now I'm gonna put a little bit of French ultramarine blue into my permanent magenta. And while it's still wet, clean up this edge. I can go in and can you see how it, now it spreads kind of like by itself because mm -hmm. it's damp or wet and I can go in here and if I go down here even I can also can you see how that can bring out the flower mm -hmm. a little bit mm -hmm. maybe I could even do a little bit here why not and now I got to stop rinse my brush dab it on my paper go in from the dry side with just my tip and no drips on the handle and just if it needs to be just pulled out a little bit, but I think it spread pretty, pretty nicely by itself. Mm -hmm. Can you see how that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty dramatic. And now I feel like going in with that color here. Mm -hmm. And just a little bit here like that. Rinse it out, dab it, and go in and loose this edge before it dries on me. So it's always the inside edge that you're trying to smooth. Yeah, because this hard edge obviously defines the form. This in here, you know, it's, it's a form shadow. Mm -hmm. It's as a, as the a pomegranate slowly moves away from the light. So that should not be a hard edge. And a little bit more there. But can you see how it makes it more and more dramatic? That gives it more and more shape when you do that. And again, you know, it's up to your temperament, how much or how little you want a doctor around with that. Yours truly happens to get a kick out of it. So, you know, she can't barely stop. Um, <laughs> and others find it, uh, you know, excruciatingly boring. And so they don't have to do it that much. So let's just get to... Uh, our branches as promised. Um, let's just start on this long one over here. And on the branches, you can jump around as you feel. feel. Uh, I think it's a good idea not to paint just from one end and then you know move all the way out. I think it's better to jump around. That's just my personal opinion. Um, because I feel that way, I don't end up with, you know, kind of painting them one way here and s without noticing I'm kind of changing. Mm -hmm. If I skip around, it doesn't matter so much because then all the love is spread around. <laughs> so, <laughs> spread the love, so, you spread the love. So what I do is I take a brush. Here I'm just taking a, it's a number six round brush and I'm putting a little bit of water down the, the little, uh, branch here and I'm going to put a little bit of water out here and out here and maybe a little bit out in these two leaves 
that are kind of coming off. Just a little bit of water. And then right away, I'm gonna dip into, this was my quinacridone gold. I'm gonna put that on this side here. And I'm just putting a little bit on here and there. And I don't, you know, you don't have to put it on everywhere. A little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit there. And a little bit maybe on my little leaves there. And whatever color, you know, I put on, it, it's not like it has to be that or whatever. So here's my French ultramarine blue. I'm gonna put that on basically on the other side. And can you see how that's running in by itself into my yellow? Mm -hmm. And they'll more or less create some kind of a green. So you moisten it first and then you put this down? Yes, I do wet first. I do water first because I want the colors to move. Right. I don't want to have to paint all this. I want the watercolors to do it for me. Now, do you think about where the light's coming from? Yes, that's that? why I put the yellow on the on sunny the, side oh, okay. of the street, so, so you to would speak. Do that all the way across your. Mm, yeah, but see, I skipped some places because I don't want them to be really boring and all the same color. So now I took some permanent magenta and I'm putting a little bit of that in here and there. Not all the same because I like variety. So I'm going to put a little bit on here. Why am I doing that? Just because I can. Uh, and then let's move along. Let's put a little bit of the quinacridone. That was permanent magenta. And here I'm putting a little bit of the quinacridone red on. How fun is that? I'm just having fun doing this, folks. And uh, let's put some more of the um, quinacridone uh, yellow, quinacridone gold on. So... And everything's still wet, so it's going to mix and mingle. And I know if things look too bright, because I have all these different colors on, they'll tone each other down, so I'm not too worried about it. And my idea is I want to keep this interesting for the viewer. And some of these leaves, they can be kind of reddish because, you know, this is towards the end of the season. The leaves are ready. You know, some of them have already fallen off. And um, some of them are brown, some of them a little bit green. So let's put a little bit of uh, more of the French ultramarine blue one. Let's do that. This is really, if you see, look, let's see, then you really see what you're doing. Go yeah, on. I mean, it's, it's just, cool. it looks, it looks very haphazard and it is to a certain degree, but it's no, because it I works. know all these colors, if I just let them mix and mingle, it'll be fine. I, I don't have to worry about it so much. And I'm gonna rinse that out, maybe put a little bit more of the yellow on, and I'm just gonna run a little yellow over here and there, and there and here, and here. And I'm just, you know, stopping here because there's like, you know, it's a kind of a natural place to stop. And I don't stop with a hard, you know, straight edge. I just kind of pull it out. And that way I can pick it up and it won't show. Um, so I think I'll take a little bit more off the uh, permanent magenta and I'm gonna dab it in a couple of places to really darken certain areas. And there, and I think I'm pretty good. And then I could take my little credit card. That's uh -huh. what I want. Yeah. <laughs> and I could use my pointy part awesome. of my credit card, and then I could scrape out a couple of little uh, ribs in the in the branch. In the branch. Like and um, guys there. Uh -huh. so that's much easier than trying to paint them in. And I am kind of happy with this little branch. I think it's very interesting to look at. And it's like some of the pomegranates, you know, and there's more pomegranates, you know, outside of my picture. The colors all pull together. Yeah, and they kind of maybe reflect into the branches and stuff like that. And, you know, it it is harmonious because I'm using the same colors. colors. yeah. And you can see when I do it like that, and then I'm going to go over maybe doing another branch now that I'm in that mode um, <clears throat> over here. So we can do this little guy, and it comes out here, and it comes down here, and it goes here, and it goes there. And they're all kind of little bumpy, these branches. So I'll do the exact same thing, only 
you know, it's the same colors I'm using, but I'm not doing the same method all the time. So here I want it really dark. Why do I want it really dark there? Because it's behind that other one. So could I actually even go in and take that dark that I created and dab in a little bit of that in and then repeat it on the other side. So what's important is that whatever color you have on one side, like here, you should start with that color on the other side so it looks like it's the same branch. Yeah. Don't have it like green here and red here. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. So, and then let's go in, let's do a little bit of, and it'll be fun if I dabbed a little bit of the yellow in there. And then let's do a little bit of the yellow and then I'm gonna pick up the uh, permanent magenta and put a little bit of that down. And this leaf, there's a leaf underneath here, so I'm gonna paint that afterwards. There, here's just a bump and then there's a leaf. <coughs> let's put a little bit of French ultramarine blue in here, maybe a little bit there. And I wanna keep it fairly light on that side because then the leaf can be darker. Keep that. Take a little bit of the yellow and make sure that everything runs together nicely. And then here. All right. So I think I want a little bit, maybe here, let's throw some red in there. So I'm happy with that color and that color on both sides. That's good. And then I can go out, <coughs> do a little bit like that. And just do a little bit like this. And I can't paint that leaf yet because you don't know, have that branch going over. So I should hold my horses on that. I like that. And can you see how I'm just dabbing coloring as long as they're kind of mixing nice and, and, um, and soft. It's really gives it a nice, I find it gives it a really nice organic mm -hmm. kind of a look. Mm -hmm. I'll get a little bit of the yellow in there. Okay, I'm good with that. And then I'm gonna rinse out my brush and then just kind of drag that here. And that way I can pick it up. I don't have to finish everything. And it would be fun to maybe get a little bit of a orangey color out here and then I can put some <coughs> dark in from this side. Let that run in. Just a little bit of a dying leaf there. And I go back in with a damp brush because I didn't like those hard lines. So then, you know, if I see some hard lines I don't like, I just kind of soften them. But can you see how uh -huh. very quickly we can get? And so now I want to have a little bit of green on that one. And I can paint this one. So here, I think it's time for me to get a little bit more of the uh, quinacridone gold out on my palette. I'm kind of out of that. There we go. Just that out. And I don't mind if the colors get a little dirty because, you know, the whole idea is that everything's mixing and mingling on the palette. Anyway, dab, dab, dab. So here I can go in and put a little bit of that with an on gold on here. And then I'm gonna go in and put a little tiny bit of the um, French ultramarine blue and I'm gonna just let them mix and mingle a little. Can you see how it's turning green? Uh -huh. Because that's what yellow and, green, and, and blue they do. They make green. So I like that. It's kind of fun. And then I can go in and give it a little scrape here. There. And I think this is dry enough. So I'll do one more and then, you know, you've seen pretty much how I do things. And so I'm putting a little bit of water on that leaf that's underneath. That's true. And um, I wanna give that a different color so it really stands out. I'm gonna put a little bit of yellow in on this one and then on this side. And put some blue in. 
that's French ultramarine blue I'm putting in here. I don't want it to be the same color as the branch because you know I want them to stand out from each other. This looks like the branch is still running a little bit. Not, not so crucial. And I think I'll put a little bit of, maybe a little red in there. Can you see I did that on both sides? Uh -huh. And that yes. way they're belonging yeah. together. How yeah. fun is that? And a little bit in the tip, a little bit out here. Oh, stop, Eva. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just so fun. And so then I go in here and scrape in. And that'll be a dark little rib because so it's scraped. So the you have used the quinacridone? Quinacridone red, quin and, red. And you've used the magenta or not? Yeah, I have here and there dabbed in magenta. You dabbed in the magenta, okay. But not in this leaf, I didn't dab it in. Oh, but okay. it doesn't matter, whatever you feel like. But I just wanted to make sure that it had a different color. And actually, so, I don't know, it might be too uh, early. Sometimes we end up having to uh, adjust our color. So right now what I'm feeling is, you know, I said I didn't want, but they're pretty much the same value, meaning dark, dark light. So I probably should wait until that leaf is completely dry, but I can lift oh, out a little bit of color yeah. to just bring that branch forward, right? Yeah. So, and then I can go back in and darken the leaf a little bit more or lift that out a little bit more. But you see, you can go in and adjust it if you find out that you miss the mark on so the value. So if you value. use the card when it's wet, it will make a dark line. Correct. But now, but on some of these, um, they're light because if yeah. there's a little bit, if the pigment is completely dry, nothing's going to happen. Okay. But if I let it dry a little bit, then I can push the pigment away uh, oh, and then okay. it doesn't have enough water to run back in again. I see. Whereas yeah. if it's really wet, I make a groove in the uh, paper uh, and uh, there's enough water, the pigment can just fall in, you know, it flows into the groove, you know, yeah. cause gravity. Uh -huh. And so it flows in, bloop, but it can't come out again. Uh-huh. Yeah. So then it's, it's uh, all the pigments are in there. On that one, there were some lighter. Yeah. yeah. So here you can see I've scraped yes. after it's when the shine has left the paper, when it's still damp, but not wet. Not, but, uh -huh. And then the pigment doesn't have enough water to flow back, you know, flow into the grooves. Yeah. It just stays wherever I deposited it. So either way, and I like to have a variety, and I also got a little bit of one here with a little highlight there, and that's the beauty of it. That's why I love using the credit card because mm -hmm. I can get both. I can get darks and I can get lights. Yeah, it's great. So a little of both. Mm.
So I put a little bit of clean water inside where I want to paint. And then I don't worry so much about what color I put in. So here's quinacridone gold. Of course, I think that was the yellow. Oops, got outside the line. Not that it matters so much, but I guess I'll have to do it like that. Um, put a little bit of that in, and I'm going to go down here, this one. Oh, oh I better do my white. And I'm going to go put a little bit of the burnt sienna in here. Oh, burnt sienna, something I didn't do with my painting. May I borrow one of these guys? I guess yes, I please. Get that on yeah. Burnt sienna. And uh, maybe I'll put a little bit of the red on. Uh, I'm wonder my painting. And I'm not cleaning my brush in between. Now I'm going to put a little bit of the blue on. And I'm going to put that here on the bottom more because I can see my arrows up there. So that means the light will hit that, that side of this little branch more. A little bit more of the blue, dab that in. So you can see I just dab it in and since everything's wet, it just runs together and I don't have to do a darn thing other than just get the color on. So what colors did you use for branch? Burnt sienna? The uh, same colors I've been using in the whole painting. Oh, I didn't use burnt sienna no. in the branch. Well, so, um, I, I just yeah, used I it. used burnt sienna and um, here is a little bit of the uh, permanent magenta, magenta and quinacridone gold, because I think that was, as I recall it, that was the yellow I used in this yeah, particular I one. Mm -hmm. yellow, that's what I was and so just use whatever colors you used in your right. painting. That's the whole key. Right, you have to use the same colors. Yeah, I, I think that's best also because then there's good. unity, unity. So now I'm going to go to a little bit of a bigger brush and then I'm going to kind of get cool. some. I don't want any hard edges in here if I can help it. And so I'm going to get this out and I think I'll let this dry a little bit too long, but it's okay. I can, I can get it wet again and put a little bit more color in here, put a little bit of the blue in. Boom. So with mine that's Boom. already been done, I can add more color just like Yes, saying, you do the same as I'm doing here. You just do it on top of what you already did. Right, Just but I put water over it and then just add some more color. Yeah. So, see here? And I do want a little bit of a green looking thing somewhere. So if I, if I want that, I'm going to have to take a little blue and a little yellow, right? And get a little green going. Were we using ultramarine blue and cobalt blue or just ultramarine I blue? just used ultramarine blue in no my cobalt. here. Okay, that's right. okay. So I think I'm good with this. That was, that was nice. good and I just look at what's hap ha what happens and if I'm happy with it, I leave it. Good. And uh, here, let me show you. If I feel that maybe I lost my light a little bit, go in while it's still damp and I can pick up a highlight. Right? I like that brush. I have yet to find a brush like that in the store. There. And then I want some uh, little veins go and I use it. my credit card and I just scrape with the pointy part no, I didn't and that. a little bit like that. And that way, you know, they're kind of interesting yeah, and it's not too monotonous and same same old same color and i happen to like that and now i have to let that dry and then i just move on to the next one a little bit like here so the important part is you get a little bit of water inside so things start flowing if you do it on dry paper you've got to work really fast and your colors won't really mingle they need the water the water is kind of like the ballroom you think of it like that and so and I don't do it I don't start it necessarily exactly with the same colors every time I, I vary it and I don't clean my brush a whole lot in between I just go in of course the colors are going to be mixing anyway and I'm going for mainly neutral so I'm I'm all about the colors having a chance to mix and mingle and you know I'm basically using all three primary colors red blue and yellow uh, so I know that if I let all color, all those colors mix, they're going to neutralize each other. I just have to introduce them. 
That's permanent magenta you're using right there, correct? Wait, no, that's that's blue. That's uh, permanent magenta. Um, yeah, I, it's you know I I vary it all the time. I see. Just, just stick, moving around. Yeah, yeah, just move around. That's blue. That's and I just green. kind of whatever I what I see happening here, and I react. That's mm -hmm. really what's happening. I react to whatever I see happening. If I like it, I leave it. And if I'm like, oh, that didn't look so good, mm -hmm. I try to put another color in. Uh, and I use my so. knowledge of color theory, so if something's too bright, uh, I think about what's the complementary color. For instance, here, I have a lot of uh, permanent magenta. That's basically a purple, so now I'm dabbing in a little bit of the quinacridone gold, and that's gonna make it more brown. Right. And if I want to get a little bit of a green color going, I put a little bit of blue in there because I had yellow on. So I can and put a little bit more yellow in. And let's see, I can do a little bit here. Darkness. I just have fun doing this. And you can see it's very, very wet. Mm. And the colors are going to mix and mingle. And just to fix the shape a little bit. And if you feel you have too much, <clears throat> can you see how wet it is? It's mm -hmm. like almost a droplet. If I think, oh, it's getting too dark. I, I uh, use a clean brush where I squeeze all the water out and I just dip, dip the tip in. And can you see how it's soaking up that extra pigment? And now I can get a highlight on there. I just have fun. Eats and there, and then it, you know, that looks nice, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it looks nice. And if I wanted to put a little sunshine in, I could put a little bit more of the yellow in. There we go. And then I'll scrape out my little vein. If I think, I don't, I don't want to do it on this one because it's like, it's a leaf like this and it's folded over. So the vein is actually up here. But on this one here, I think I should scrape out a little bit. Yeah, I should have done that. But see, fun, 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 and fun. All right, so um, now I'm in my studio at home, trying to finish this one up. Um, and I just have a few little things I need to complete. So here, this leaf, I wanted to say that it kind of turned over. And so we're using our quinacridone gold. And I'm going to put a tiny bit of the um, French ultramarine blue in. And that was, it was too watery. So this leaf, I want to say that it's turning over like that. This is the back side of it. This is one little area that's turned over. And once it's dry, I'll have to go in and then I'll have to darken the inside of the leaf. So that's what's going on there. And then here, there's a leaf and I can see the tip on the other side. Control the water in my brush. There we go. Put a little bit of French ultramarine blue in. It's a cool color, so that can push it down underneath here. And then it's gonna up here. I'm gonna put a little bit of the quinacridone gold in. And I'm gonna put a little bit of the burnt sienna in here, the tip, and on this side. A little bit of the gold there, and I'm just going to let that dry. And here, I think I'm just going to put there's a little stem. disappears behind there. So I'm just dabbing in French ultramarine blue um, burnt sienna and there's a little bit of the quinacridone gold and I'm gonna continue that up here and it's kind of disappearing behind so just a little stem like that. And there's a leaf there, but I can't 
I can't um, paint that in just yet. And here is another little continuation of a stem that kind of ends in just those little dead spots. And I'm going to give it a little bit of red. That's the quinacridone red that I'm using. And just add that in there. A little bit there, a little bit there. And there's some leaves and petals. And then here I want a nice bright green on the tip of this one because it's going to be over the red area. So I'm going to give it quinacridone gold as an underpainting. And then before it dries on me, I'm going to put in a little bit of the um, French ultramarine blue to turn it green. Green and red, you know, they are complementary colors, so I really want to have that green here. And a little variation in it, and then that can disappear back here. There. And while it's still damp, and I put in with my credit card the little center there and I might even dab out a little bit like that okay so that's that and here's another one um, do that one a little bit darker on this side And it's also going behind here, so who knows. A little bit of a yellow on this side. And I want to put even a little bit of the red in here. All right, dab in here. And then here, underneath is another little stem can't paint it the whole way but and let's see what we have going on here I think there might be another little leaf and let's give that a little bit of a red in it and then that there and here is another stem and just using again just a mixture of those colors that we have already used. Might want to do it a little lighter since it's going over that other one, lighter and a little warmer, so dab a little bit of the red in here. And right now I'm in the mode where I'm not really worried about what my reference photo said. I don't really care about that now. Now I just care about um, what my painting needs. And so here was another leaf I hadn't painted. Let's paint that in. So I'm doing that a little bit lighter since I have that dark little stem or branch. There's that. Dab in a little bit more of that color here while I can. And then here I think there's another leaf coming out and going underneath here. I have to keep a little distance because this is still very wet. Lift out a little bit with a thirsty brush. There. I want it dark on this side where it's going underneath and then I want a little highlight here. And then this little guy would be like this. There. 
And let's scrape in a couple of little lines to indicate. And then here. And this one would be good if that was a little dark on like right there. Oops, put my hands squarely down into my wet paint. There. And I think, let's take a look. Yeah, so now all this looks fine. Now I need to, this is like my main, my main um, focus. So that needs to be brightened up, but I have to wait for that to dry. So in the meantime, I can see I have some little areas that need a little tune-up. Maybe this one needed to also be separated a little bit even. I mean, this is nitty-gritty, folks. You don't have to do this. Um, all right. Let's see. Can I get to this one? Now I better get myself a bigger brush. Make sure I have a nice, clean red. And I'm going to use a little bit of my... I'm going to use a little bit of my permanent magenta. Because I really need to darken this side. And I'm just going to bravely go in. That's pure burnt... Uh, no, permanent magenta. Can you see it? Yes. Okay, get it up here, down there, and I have lots and lots of pigment on my brush. Now I dipped into some of the Conacron Red. And now I need to rinse it out, get just pure Conacron Red on, and go in so I can change the color. And now, clean my brush, make sure it's really clean and not too wet. And now I'm going to go in, I just felt my brush, I often do that when I'm wanting to make absolutely sure that I have the right amount of water on my brush. And now I'm going to go in and take a little bit of that quinacridone gold a little bit more of the quinacridone red up here and up here and just dabbing in and now rinse my brush Whoops, and it was way too wet. Can you? I, I don't know if you saw that, but it was way too wet. I think I saved it. And then go here. A little bit more of the quinacridone gold. And a little bit of the quinacridone red in to just make it a little bit warmer, more orange. And rinse out my brush and get in here and just pull out that color and make sure I don't get any hard lines in here go down there I think I sort of got see I have one area that I'm not happy with it's right there and so I think that needs to have some more Quinacridone red. So let's go and get that in down here. There. And then we need to pull it up, pull it up, pull it up, pull it up, and pull it up here. Clean my brush. Super clean. Make sure it's not too damp. And here we go. Let me see. Yep. I think I am happy with that and probably smartest thing would be to call it a day. 
and call this one done. I hope you enjoyed that and um, that you're trying it yourself. And um, you know you can do a lot of different things with these. Um, you can do different backgrounds and all that stuff. But um, I'm going to call this one done and um, happy painting. I uh, hope you had fun with these um, pomegranates.